Hey adventurers, today is a video about song and poetry in books and what we like about that and why we like it. And we will be giving some examples that we feel are good examples or utilize lots of poetry in those books. So one reason I really like to see poetry or songs in books, but specifically poetry, is because specifically poetry that we know in our world is because it takes something that we know and are familiar with and ties it into a book in a really unique way. And it's seeing how it's applied differently in different settings and stories is really good. And rhyme and rhythm, I love poetry, and rhyme and rhythm are so beautiful to, to read. I think that it really enhances the prose when there is a break for a song and it really builds the story world as well. It can bring the words to life. Um, I once heard that poetry is a way of compressing meaning and I think that's a really interesting perspective on how poetry is used in books specifically. I mean, I have a specific book in mind that we're going to talk about in a minute and I think it'll make more sense if you guys have read that book. I agree with everything that Kate said there and because of that I had to come up with some points of my own. So my, some of the reasons why I really like poetry in books is because it allows you to slip world building into the story without it feeling super info dumpy because lots of people don't like info dumps. Lots of people also don't like poetry breaks. but. It's a way, it's an interesting way to do it that's different than just a block of information that lots of people don't like. It's also an interesting way of making the world feel um, realistic and lived in by, in, by having these um, poems that talk about certain aspects of the world. You see that the characters have lived in the world or that in the past there has been these characters who have known the world so well that they can put it into words in this very unique and beautiful way that sometimes can't be done and isn't done nearly as much as it is in the current timeline. So for clarification, we're talking about a, a handful of different things. We're talking about both original poetry and books relating specifically to the world. We're talking about poetry that we have in our world that is used in stories. And we're talking about songs, original songs and orig and non-original songs in books. The only thing that this excludes for this specific video is prophecies, like mm -hmm. chosen one prophecies, for example. We have dis we chose to remove those because that in itself could be an entire video just talking about different prophecies and how they tend to relate to stories. Poetry in books can be really useful for, like Tony said, building the world and the, the feeling of it. I also find that poetry is a really excellent way to portray emotion. So there's a quote by William Shakespeare that says, when words are scarce, they are seldom spent in vain. And I think that makes a lot of sense regarding poetry because not all the time, but oftentimes poetry is condensed. And that, I think that's what I'm getting at. It doesn't need to be necessarily. Some poems are longer, some poems are shorter. And there's different types of poems. Wow, that was, <laughs> <laughs> did you know that? But yeah, I like poetry because it expresses an emotion in a really great showing type of way in the story, I think. Yeah, one of, and we'll get to this a little bit with our examples, but one of the ways that I really like to see it done is by telling a story from the past um, and bringing it into, have a character in the story telling that story from the past. I'm thinking specifically of the um, the Lay of Luthien from The Lord of the Rings, where Aragorn is telling the story of Baron and Luthien to the hobbits. And by doing that, you build out this world, you help flesh it out, but then you can also learn so much about how the world has changed and what these characters' motivations are in many ways. The ballads, yeah. Yeah, by knowing, by seeing the type of stories and poetry that they themselves like, you get to understand that character better. So moving right into examples of this type of thing, I want to talk about the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes first. Of course, it says in the title there's a ballad, but because this is still a relatively new book and there's a lot of people, including Tony, who haven't read it yet, I'm going to refrain from going too in-depth about that. The, the point we made about ballads is really illustrated well in that story, and there's a lot of songs in there. Um, but I will talk about The Hanging Tree in The Hunger Games, so in Mockingjay, the lyrics for The Hanging Tree are really important to the propaganda type of stuff that District 13 is putting out against the Capitol's own propaganda. And they use a specific verse in this. Are you, are you coming to the tree? Wear a necklace of rope side by side with me. Strange things did happen here. No stranger would it be if we met at midnight in the hanging tree. 
And in the aired propo, Katniss is singing this and they change it to wear a necklace of hope side by side with me. However, this song, without going into spoilers, this song comes up in ballad again and has a whole nother layer of meaning, which is really, really fantastic to see. And because of that, it's such an amazing way to use a song in a book to mean so many different things. It meant hope for these these rebels and in ballad, it meant something completely different. You all know that I love the Redwall series and I was going to choose a poem slash song from Eulalia, but I couldn't find it. I don't own the a hard copy of Eulalia, so I couldn't find the poem that I was looking for. So instead I just, um, I wish that I could because it's a beautiful song, especially the tune that is written that you can hear when you listen to the audiobook. Um, but because I couldn't find it, I chose to go with a different book and it's not as good of a poem and it's, I mean, it's a good poem, but it's not what I originally wanted from this series, but it's, it was available and it was easy. For this poem, I s switched to Doom White. Um, and the poem is red and green, green and red, gouged out of an idol's head, spurned by flower, red and green, for the evil ye have seen. Where are they for magic lights? Seek for them in vain, ye whites. And this poem is written, again, it's written in the past and is, um, it tell, kind of tells the story vaguely. Um, when you, once you know the story, you understand exactly what it means, but it tells the story of how these red and green, green and red, what these are and how they came to be missing from the idol's head. And once you read the book, you'll understand all of what this whole poem means. And it's very interesting the way that it's done. So another book series that uses poetry a lot in it is The Matched Trilogy by Ali Condi. And I ended up only reading the first two books of this. And I, I stopped after that for personal reasons, which I've talked about in a vlog that you guys can check out if you're interested. But one thing I loved about that is the use of poetry in it. It's a dystopian type of world. And they take poetry from past poetry we know and apply it to the story and it becomes motivation. It kind of almost embodies the theme in some ways, but it really becomes the motivation for the characters. So the poem that was used in book one of the Match trilogy, which is matched, is called Do Not Go Gently Into That Good Night by Dylan Thomas. And I'm just gonna read the first stanza. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. It was really interesting seeing how this affected, tied in with so many other levels of how, sh how the character came about. Knowing this poetry, the rarity of poetry, rarity is not a word in this situation, but it was really amazing seeing this and in intertwined with the book and how it played out. In the second book in the series, there was a whole other section of poetry that was amazing, that was so cool to see how it makes, it made the whole world come alive. And it was a motivation and I loved how such how how it was such a huge part of the story and this is a very famous poem as it is and so using it which i haven't read the books but using it in a story adds a whole nother layer of power to the, what it's trying right to say. this is the side of poetry or song that we see in our world that we know in our world that maybe has affected us emotionally already and they're putting it in a story and showing how it affects this character emotionally and it's really amazing to see so I've, I've mentioned Lord of the Rings already once, and I'm not going to talk about the Lay of Luthien again, um, but probably the most famous poem in the Lord of the Rings is Three Rings for the Elven Kings Under the Sky, Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their Halls of Stone, Nine for Mortal Men Doomed to Die, One for the Dark Lord on his Dark Throne, In the Land of Mordor where the Shadows Lie, One Ring to Rule Them All, One Ring to Find Them, One Ring to Bring Them All, And in the Darkness Bind Them in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. And this, this poem has so much meaning and implication in this world that there's a, a power to it. You, you see by the wording of it in our, in real life, how powerful of a, of a poem it is. But now you take that and apply it to the world and the setting of the books where the One Ring is pure evil, and you see it how dangerous and how powerful and moving and scary this poem is to them. 
and then when they translate into black speech and say it like that, it's very interesting how how useful and how powerful it is. I mean, there's so many other poems in The Lord of the Rings. One of the ones that I love that I'm not going to do is the- All that is gold does not glitter. Well, that's a good one. That's my favorite one. That's a great one, but th I also love the fact that he, um, Tolkien that is, took the, the cow jumped over the moon poem and expanded on it. And it was like, yeah, this is how it was originally, but over the years, as it's been passed down and retold, it's become this lesser thing that we know today. And I love the fact that he did that. But one of the other ones that I really love though is The Road Goes Ever On and On. On and On. This one was written in, in the story by Bilbo. And I don't think this is the entire thing that I'm going to read. I think there's more verses to it that I don't have access, well, I have access to, but I don't um, have marked at the moment. So this one says, the road goes ever on and on, down from the door where it began. Now far ahead the road has gone, and I must follow if I can, pursuing it with eager feet until it joins some larger way, where many paths and errands meet, and whither then, I cannot say. The feeling of longing and forlorn that is shown in this book, or in this poem, is very interesting and very beautiful. Um, I want to. Kate's. And I'm sorry, I have to read this because it's my, probably my absolute favorite poem, a uh, fictional poem. All that is gold does not glitter. Not all those who wander are lost. The old that is strong does not wither. Deep roots are not reached by the frost. From the ashes a fire shall be woken. A light from the shadows shall spring. Renewed shall be blade that was broken. The crownless again shall be king. It's a very, very well-known poem. Probably maybe the most well-known of Lord of the Rings. Yeah, most popular. possibly. Yeah. And now that we've had our 10-minute Lord of the Ring rant, <laughs> We'll move on. So the last one I wanted to talk about, it was And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. The poem used in this book is The Tin Little Soldier Boys, and I love how directly it's tied to the murders that take place in this book. It was so amazing to read. So I'm going to go ahead and read that without going too much into how And Then There Were None worked out. I'll let you guys read that if you haven't already. Ten little soldier boys went out to dine. One choked his little self, and then there were nine. Nine little soldier boys sat up very late. One overslept himself, and then there were eight. Eight little soldier boys traveling to Devon. One said he'd stay there, and then there were seven. Seven little soldier boys chopping up sticks. One chopped himself in half, and then there were six. Six little soldier boys playing with a hive. A bumblebee stung one of them, and then there were five. Five little soldier boys going in for law. One got in chancery, and then there were four. Four little soldier boys going out to sea. A red herring swallowed one, and then there were three. Three little soldier boys walking in the zoo. A big bear hugged one, and then there were two. Two little soldier boys sitting in the sun. One got frizzled up, and then there was one. One little soldier boy left all alone. He went and hanged himself, and then there were none. Guys, reading this again brings the whole story back, and it encompasses the entire mystery, and it was amazing to see this in the book. If you haven't read And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie, it's definitely a book I recommend if you like murder mysteries. So I've never, I haven't read And Then There Were None, and I haven't ever heard The Ten Little Soldier Boys, but re hearing it read and reading it as she read it, I can picture exactly <laughs> what's going to happen, and it's I love it. so good. That's amazing. It's amazing seeing it come together in the book. Um, and, oh, the mystery of it all, guys. There's another poem that... I'm sure is used in stories somewhere. Um, this is one that actually tells a story and I was reminded of it by this Tin Little Soldier Boys poem. And that is, I don't remember how what, it, what the title of it's called, but I remember the poem. And it's, pull up a chair and sit on the floor. The commission is free, so pay at the door. One beautiful day in the middle of night, two dead boys got up to fight. Back to back, they faced each other, drew their swords and shot each other. The deaf policeman heard the noise and came and shot the two dead boys. If you don't believe me, ask the blind man. He saw it all. I don't know why that now we're just randomly, poetry randomly to you now. came into my mind, but I loved it so much. And it's such an interesting and twisted and weird poem. But it re the Tin Little Soldier Boys just brought it to my mind and I had to share it. Because it's an amazing story poem. So that is all. <laughs> that is a whole bunch of poems and poetry and books and why we like it. If you have any specific poems that you love or any books that you know of that really use poetry to an amazing level, let us know. 
Um, They're so fun to read. I love seeing that. Yeah, it's it's such an interesting storytelling device that I feel is very underutilized. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and like this video. And comment down below, like Tony just said, of any books with poetry in them that you guys know of. Thanks for watching. Stay warm. translate into black speech and say it like that, which I'm not going to do because you don't need to hear me try and say that, although I could. Um, but it's, <laughs> You're flex, it's, flexing <laughs> over here. Yeah, but no, it's, I can it's say very, it in black speech. Um,